Hey guys, I'm that 1320 chick. Welcome back to my channel. I am sitting in the Mustang right now, getting ready to leave. I just got back from work, so I grabbed myself um grab myself something to work at the shop in and wanted to switch cars from my truck. We are going to be installing my bare brakes today. I showed you guys those um couple videos back unboxing those so we're finally going to install them i also have my matching front runners coming in they should be in they say six weeks but last time they came in a lot earlier than that so we are going to be figuring out putting those on sorry putting those on and uh kind of going over what we did in the last couple weeks so thanks for checking in talk to you soon pretty self-explanatory but I just want to make sure I'm just taking the wheels off um, taking the lugs off and once once this is done and the tires out of the way um, then the caliper is going to be loosened and then I'm going to put the caliper up out of the way and then take the rotor off so I'll walk you through it but I just want to give you a quick little insight of what we're doing so I weighed everything, so I'm going to post those so you can see what, what the point of all this is and why I really want to do it because I want to save some weight with, this, some weight with all of this. I forgot how light these P51s are. I got a lot of questions on these wheels. These, these wheels are uh, P51 wheels. They came on our donor Mustang, if you're new to the channel, our smash donor that we had. Um, it's a 19 inch wheel and this is 19 by 10 in the front, so it's not typically as big as I would do um, width, width wise in the front, but since they came off our donor and they were beautiful, a um, little damage on them, so these are gonna ha eventually have to get stripped and repotter coated just for my OCD purposes, because I hate you know, little stuff like that, but in the future that'll happen. But. Uh, I got, I don't know if I told you guys also, I have my front runners coming. And my front runners actually came in two days shipping, so I'm really excited about those for my race for Saturday. I got those too. So, 15 mil bolt to take it off. So I'm taking the caliper off. There you go. So you just need the right tool for the job. Yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's too much. You so say you could have slid it in. What do you mean slid it in? That's the one that's the adjustable slidey. Oh, yes. Get it, girl. <laughs> All right, slide your ass out. I know. I'm taking this jack stand and I am putting it right here so I can put the, lift the caliper up out of the way. It's oh a big boy. Boy, it's heavy. So that's out of the way. Now to pick up this rotor, which is heavy. How many pounds, Joe? 27. Did we weigh it at 27? Say with confidence. It's 27 pounds. Squatting workout weight. Then you do some Russian twists with it. God, I would die. <laughs> you ain't got those kind of power obliques. I wish. Okay, so the, the photo doesn't say yes or no, but we're gonna take the dust shield off. Okay. 
So new rotor. So this is a 12 inch rotor from factory. They're 14 inch. So we'll set that on. So the reason that we really wanted to do this aside from weight savings was so I can run a 17 inch wheel in the front. So before the bolt was a 15 and now this is a 19. I'm gonna assist you by holding this like that. Did, did you, I was gonna say, did you just get that first stab? Yep. I'm so envious. So, already it's already set. set. Probably can't see it because this doesn't pick um, up well. Doesn't pick up well, and it takes forever to zoom. Um, it's 85 foot pounds to tor tor torque. Torque. <laughs> if you've watched other install videos, you know I have a really hard time saying torque. <laughs> torque. How much torque does your car make, Joe? Not enough. <laughs> You might have a little bit of uh, this is a big boy configuration fun. Oh, there you go. Now the top one. Can you reach it? Or do you need a small extension? Yeah, you're gonna need an extension. <laughs> So, um, before you make fun that I'm using gloves, I like using gloves just because I hate grimy feeling, but in this situation, I recommend using gloves because brake fluid is highly corrosive. So, I don't know what's going to end up on my hands. I took my rings off just to make sure. Um, rather be safe than sorry. So, what I'm doing is, now that everything is torqued to 85 foot-pounds, we're all set with all of this. Um, so now I just have to take the line from the OEM caliper and put it to now the brake caliper, the new bare caliper. I'll show you guys this and how this works. So it's um, boomerang, is that what you call it? <laughs> Banjo. Banjo. <laughs> boomerang would make more sense <laughs> if the, the liquid goes through it, comes back. <laughs> That makes more sense though. Boomerangs come back to you. Boomerangs. A banjo don't do shit with anything. <laughs> okay, so this is a banjo washer again. Banjo bolt. Banjo, banjo bolt. So again, it doesn't. Our camera for some reason doesn't focus very well, so I'm gonna try to show it to you. Um, there's holes in the top, and then there's also a hole on the bottom. So I have to put a crush washer on it, which is pretty self-explanatory, which is what I have to do. So I'm breaking loose the bleeder screw. To grab. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. That's it? Yep. And then you're going to put the line on. Put the line on. So that when you put the brake line on, it'll gravity bleed. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to put the stick that right up out of the way for right now. And then this is 13 mil removed. Okay. okay. Broke the loose. Okay. So now. You can kind of. Oh, now I see. You can temporarily plug the line. Just hold, hold your fingers over it just to keep it. Okay. Okay. And then. I would drop that caliper out of the way so it doesn't fall. Set it down on the fan. Okay. Okay. Now hold your line closed for a second. You don't want to twist it up. You want it to be like the same orientation as the stock one was. So it's got to spin another like that. So it'll. Nope, no, nope. You got it right there like that. So make sure that the crush wash is off both sides of it. It's not stuck on it. Which is it? Yeah. Ah! Oh, 
my nail back so bad. All right, oh. let me grab you a pick. All right, okay. ready to build back up? Where does it? You gotta go that bolt first. Then put this on the other side. And then grab the one socket that's left on the foam to my left. Okay. Put it on and just tighten it down some. Alright, you don't need to crank on it, just enough to seal it. Okay. Cool. So, what's going to happen? here with gravity bleeding what it's going to do is, is we're, we're going to see the brake fluid start to come out and it's going to push the air out there we go can you see that you can kind of see it starting so you can see it pushing air bubbles out i don't know if that's helping or hurting the light hurting <laughs> There, that's fine. Yep. The camera's having a hard time focusing though. Yeah, no. Okay. So, while this is coming out, you want to check up here, you want to check the master cylinder because you don't want it to get air through the system at all. So it looks like we're right at the edge of the tube. So that's at the max line. So you don't want it to get any lower than right here. So the rest of the video is just finishing up the rear as I didn't want to bore you with too long of a video. The process is essentially the same. We also had to bleed the brakes. So my next video following up after this will be the break-in process, the bedding process, and my overall initial thoughts and review of the brakes. Thanks for checking out the video guys. Like and subscribe and comment below on content you like to see from me.